It's one of the nicer tree line blocks in New York. And only 20 minutes from the center of town. Oh, and just around the corner, there's a supermarket. And the cleaners. That's Father Harron in 5A. He's blind. Blind? Well, then what does he look at? <laughs> there is danger everywhere. There is evil, evil everywhere. Turn around, Allison. Look behind you. There is horror. There is darkness. I think Allison may die. But watching, waiting, warding off evil, there is hope. The Sentinel. Before Halloran, there was Father David Spinetti. Before him, Mary Thorin becomes Sister Mary Angelica. Father Matthew Halloran dies the same day that Allison Parker disappears and becomes Sister Teresa. I call thee! May horror and confusion expedite our glory! Is the Sentinel the only thing that stands between the mortal world and the torment of hell? between happiness and horror. She went to a party with eight dead murderers. Eli Wallach. Doesn't everybody? Have a hat to noisemaker. Sylvia Miles. Nobody has lived in that building for three years. Ava Gardner, Martin Balsam, Jose Ferrer, Arthur Kennedy. There is danger. I swear to God, I'll kill you! Chris Sarandon. I'll kill you! <laughs> Burgess Meredith. Welcome home. And Christina Raines. The Sentinel. The most frightening motion picture experience of your life. And the most revealing. Turn around. Look behind you. Be one with us. No! There is evil everywhere. And the Sentinel is the only hope. The Sentinel. Hey everyone, this is Michael again, and welcome to another movie review. And this review is going to be on The Sentinel, which was released in 1977. And the film stars Chris Sarandon, Christina Raines, Martin Balsam, John Carradine, Jose Ferrara, Ava Gardner, Burgess Meredith, also uh, Beverly D'Angelo. And the film is based off of the book by Jeffrey Convitz. I think that's how you pronounce uh, his last name. Now, The Sentinel, I've heard of this film. I've seen uh, them talk about this film on the web series uh, Trailers from Hell, uh, which is a project uh, by uh, Joe Dante. You know, it's a pretty uh, cool web series where they talk about, you know, Horror, sci-fi, fantasy, cult films, you know, all uh, talked about by, you know, different directors. And Edgar Wright, of course, who directed Baby Driver, which I really enjoy, and Scott Pilgrim vs. The World, which I love. He talked about uh, this film in uh, the Trails from Hell uh, web series. And I'm like, okay, you know, what he described about the film I'm interested in checking it out. Of course, you know, the film is set in New York. It's, you know, set in Brooklyn. And I just got done watching the film, and I really enjoyed it. I thought this was a very uh, interesting uh, horror film. You know, very uh, creepy atmosphere that the film has. Uh, good makeup effects. And the cinematography uh, was uh, really good. Thought uh, the acting uh, was also, uh, you know, very good in this. And basically, what the film is about is it's about Alison Parker, who is played by Christina Raines. She is a model, you know, very beautiful woman, and she wants to move into an apartment. So she enlists uh, Ava Gardner's character, uh, Miss Logan, to you know, take her to show this uh, Brooklyn Brownstone. 
uh, which is in Brooklyn Heights. So she ends up uh, getting a liking to it, you know, Christina Rain's character, Allison. So she moves into it, and Ava Gardner's character ends up, uh, you know, telling uh, Christina Rain's character that there's this uh, blind priest that lives on the top floor in this brownstone. And the blind priest, of course, his name is uh, Father Halloran, who is played by John Carradine. And he just spends his time sitting at, you know, his open window, and he's blind. And pretty much, basically, uh, this is what he does. He just stares at, you know, the uh, window of his apartment there. And, you know, pretty much, basically, after uh, Christina Raines' character, Allison, moves into the apartment, she starts getting these problems with her, which are very strange. Uh, she ends up uh, fainting, and she ends up having insomnia. She ends up hearing noises in the apartment, and she ends up meeting her odd neighbors. Uh, one of the neighbors is Charles Chazen, who is played by Burgess Meredith, who pretty much has you know a bird and a uh, cat, you know, a black and white fur, which she uh, names Jezebel. And she also meets uh, this uh, lesbian couple, uh, Gertie and Sandra, who are played by Sylvia Miles and Beverly D'Angelo. They are these, they are these two uh, lesbians. And pretty much, there's a scene where Beverly D'Angelo's character, you know, when she meets uh, Allison, Christina Raines' character, she ends up masturbating in front of her. And pretty much, basically, uh, as the film you know, goes on, we find that this brownstone building is owned by the church, and it is this gateway to hell. So pretty much, basically, you know, that's what the plot, you know, to the film is about. But I thought the film was very interesting. I liked the story to it. Granted, I haven't read the other book, but I just liked that there was, you know, stuff going on. You know, in the film, in the brownstone, very weird stuff, as Christina Raines' character ends up moving in. Uh, when we get introduced to Burgess Meredith's character, you know, he's a, you know, nice guy. And then we see, you know, later on, he has all this party stuff, you know, in the box. And I'm like, okay, you know, something's very weird going on, you know, here with his character. And they end up throwing a birthday party for Burgess Meredith's cat, you know, Jezebel, which I thought that was funny. You have the one woman go, uh, black and white cake, black and white cat. <laughs> but, yeah, you know, I thought it was a, uh, you know, funny scene there, you know, just having a birthday for a cat. And, you know, it was very weird, you know, Sylvia Miles' character, and uh, Beverly D'Angelo's characters, you know, these two lesbian, you know, couple. And, you know, like I said, you know, Beverly D'Angelo's character masturbates in front of uh, Christina Raines' character. But just uh, very weird characters, you know, Sylvia Miles and Beverly D'Angelo's, you know, characters are. Uh, you also have uh, Chris Sarandon. In the film, Chris Sarandon plays... Uh, Christina Raines' character's boyfriend, who is a detective. So it was good to see Chris Sarandon, you know, in the film. Very good actor. You know, of course, he was in Fright Night as Jerry Dandridge, the villain in that. Of course, uh, he played Mike Norris in the first Child's Play film. So both films were directed by uh, Tom Holland. So, but it was good to see him in. Uh, in the film. And also you have a, a very uh, little early appearance by Jeff Goldblum. Jeff Goldblum plays uh, one of the uh, photographers, you know, in the film that's photographing uh, Christina Raines' character. So it was cool to see a young Jeff Goldblum in there. You also have uh, Christopher Walken, uh, one of his earliest roles where he plays a cop. So he's in it. You know, Beverly D'Angelo's also one of her uh, earliest uh, roles. So 
but also uh, Ava Gardner as you know Miss Logan. You know, I thought she did a uh, pretty uh, good job in the film, just explaining to Christina Reigns' character, you know, about the brownstone, which with the brownstone, uh, it gets you know changed. Like uh, Christina Reigns' character Allison is like, oh well, it was the apartment wasn't like this. So the furniture, you know, wasn't like that. There was different furniture in here. You know, so the, the apartments start changing. And pretty much uh, everyone that uh, Allison meets at uh, the cat's birthday party, she finds out that all those, you know, people are all deceased murderers. So that's a little... Uh, twist there you know there's a lot of twists you know in this film so pretty much you know the brownstone is revealed to be a gateway to hell and we get you know Burgess Meredith's character and these uh you know people you know there start to attack you know Christina Reigns' character there uh very uh cool makeup effects on those uh, people done by uh, Dick Smith, uh, who uh, did the makeup for uh, The Exorcist. Uh, here's a better uh, look at uh, how the uh, the makeup looks. They are very uh, very cool, very creepy. You also had the stuff with Allison and her father. Pretty much, basically, her father ends up uh, slapping her while. Uh, her father was having sex with these two women, and in the process, uh, she ends up uh, slitting her wrist, and, you know, her father dies, and her father one night comes back in a corpse, ghostly white uh, skin, and he ends up trying to attack uh, Allison, and basically, Allison ends up uh, escaping uh, her father's corpse by stabbing him and she gets hospitalized with a nervous breakdown because she runs out of the apartment. People are coming up to her, you know, surrounding her and that leads to uh, Christopher Walken's character and also uh, Eli Walsh's characters to investigate, you know, about Allison. And that's well, all I'm going to explain, you know, about the film, you know, without spoiling more, because it's a film that, you know, you got to check out, that you all should check out. It's not a perfect horror film by any means, but it's a good movie. It's a good horror film with a uh, creepy, with a creepy atmosphere to it. You know, good uh, makeup effects. Uh, story is very interesting, and it'll leave you on, you know, the edge of your seat. You know, just knowing about, you know, the brownstone and, you know, what's going on, you know, in it. But it is uh, filmed in New York. It was uh, shot in Brooklyn Heights, which uh, you see, you know, the Brooklyn Heights promenade. If you've uh, been to, you know, New York here, if you've been to Brooklyn, if you visited, you know, Brooklyn Heights, you know, the promenade has good views of uh, the city. I've been there. Uh, once very fantastic and the brownstone uh, in the film is still there uh, if you visit Brooklyn Heights the brownstone in the film you know of course is still there so but the Sentinel it is uh, a horror film to uh, check out you know like I said very creepy atmosphere to it uh, it's very uh, well shot in some scenes, good cinematography, and also, you know, story is very interesting. I think it's very underrated, in my opinion. But uh, the film was uh, written, uh, directed, produced by uh, Michael Weiner. Michael Weiner was one of the uh, co-writers of the film. Of course, uh, Jeffrey uh, Convitz, who wrote yeah, the book was also uh, a writer to it. But this is the uh, 
Blu-ray from uh, Screen Factory. You see there. And it has uh, features. It has uh, three commentaries. You have a uh, commentary with Jeffrey Convitz, commentary with uh, Michael Weiner, commentary with Christina Raines, who played Allison, interview with assistant director Ralph S. Singleton, the trailer, still galleries, a TV spot in there also. So, but The Sentinel, very good movie, really liked it. Not a perfect horror film by any means, though, but it's one to check out. And the film did good at the box office uh, when it came out in 1977. Had a budget of $3 million and it made $4 million. So it did good at the box office. And surprisingly, uh, no sequel uh, came out uh, to it because uh, Jeffrey uh, Convitz wrote a sequel to the book called The Guardian. And it would have been cool uh, to see you know, a sequel uh, to uh, the film here. You know, for you know, if they did a uh, film adaption of the uh, of the Guardian. So, but a uh, little bit of a uh, trivia here, uh, if I could find it. Jeff Goldblum was dubbed in all but one scene. Uh, Christina Raines has said that the film crew actually used the exterior and the interiors of the Brooklyn Heights brownstone for the film. Christina Rain says a lot of strange things happened while they were shooting there, particularly when she was assigned an apartment to use as a dressing room and found out it was being rented by a priest. Wow. Uh, she was under contract with Universal at the time. Almost, she almost didn't get the leading role due to a female executive at Universal who was more interested in pushing other clients for parts and ignoring her. She was told this directly by Michael Weiner, who went against the executive's wishes and cast her anyway. Uh, Christina Raines later said this may not have been for the best, however, and as she didn't like uh, Weiner's maddening approach to directing. She ended up saying that she cried every day on her way to work and admitted in an interview that she had never watched this film due to the treatment she received on the set. Wow, it's crazy. Also, uh, there is a cameo by Richard Dreyfuss. I, I didn't spot Richard Dreyfuss uh, in here. Must have been a uh, blink and miss uh, kind of uh, you know, spot there. But uh, he was uh, in the film. He was talking to uh, Christina Raines and her friend, uh, you know, who was played by Deborah. Who was played. Uh, played by Deborah Raffin in the film while they were walking on the sidewalk. So it was a quick blink and miss. I didn't spot, you know, Richard Dreyfus though, but he's in the film. Uh, if you guys could spot him, if you watch it. But like I said, The Sentinel, good film, really liked it. Not a perfect horror film by any means though, but still, it's worth checking out, in my opinion. But anyways, that's it for my review of The Sentinel. Thank you all for watching. Hope you all enjoyed this review. Definitely give the video a thumbs up, comment, subscribe, and I will see you all later tonight with the Monday Night Raw review. So, see you all later tonight.